This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 263, Just Brew It, by Nighar Fanuni of nigharfanuni.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. Now, today's post is gonna be about coffee. Now, here's where my parents should have known they're gonna have a kid who's gonna be addicted to coffee in the future. My mom, in particular, would drink coffee. She often wouldn't finish it, so that mug of coffee would sit there all afternoon. As a kid, I don't know what was wrong with me, I would walk up to that cup, love the smell, it was just black, and I would finish it off. Based on the post I'm about to read to you from Miss Fanuni, sounds like she might have been one of those kids too. Now before we get into it, don't forget that we give away books to random people on our mailing list on the first of the month. That's coming up soon, so to be in the raffles, just make sure you join the email list at oldpodcast.com before then. I'll give you a quick reminder at the end of the show. So for now, let's hear today's post and start optimizing your life. Just Brew It by Nighar Fanuni of nigharfanuni.com. 0600 Monday morning. A cup of organic, French-pressed black coffee. Two lazy pig dogs. Mumford & Sons. A quiet house. Always the first to rise, I relish the stillness. In fact, the boys know full well not to get out of bed before 0715. Mama needs her alone time. These fleeting early moments, before the rising of the sun, they are deeply cherished. First blush of morning will not appear until 0659 here in Santa Monica. Until then, I am blessed with these stolen moments of darkness, these moments when it feels as though the whole world is asleep and all that exists is me, my mellow tunes, and my black coffee. Oh yes, and these dogs who have somehow managed to go back to sleep despite the fact that they've only recently awoken. Alone time in my home is a rare commodity and therefore something I do not take for granted. While the time itself is important, the simple things that fill it are by far more relevant. The gentle sound of my keystrokes, the ambience of my music, the stillness of the sleepy neighborhood, and the coffee, especially the coffee. You see, I'm not a person who drinks coffee to wake up or stay awake. I'm not addicted to coffee by any means, and I'm certainly not in the habit of drinking coffee that tastes horrible simply for the caffeine boost. I love coffee, plain and simple. I love the aroma, the taste, the warmth. Above all, I love the ritual. Give me a cup of smooth, organic, fair trade black coffee, and I am at peace. Take my coffee and well, you wouldn't like me when you take my coffee. So imagine my justifiable frustration at the slew of coffee haters in my social media feed. Lately, it seems to be running rampant. I've just about had it with headlines such as do these five things every morning instead of drinking coffee or 10 simple steps to giving up coffee or the seven best coffee substitutes or eight reasons to quit coffee. You know what? No, just no. Listen, I might do those five things. I might employ those predictable regurgitations such as practicing yoga, drinking herbal tea, splashing your face with cold water and so on. I'm not saying those alternate activities have no value, rather that they are great additions to the coffee ritual, not replacements. Because if you're a coffee lover, a true bean aficionado, nothing is gonna replace your desire to brew. Nothing. And why should it, really? I mean, if Thor likes it. But seriously, a profound love of coffee is hardly a punishable offense. Much like everything else, however, its consumption should have limits and proper intentions. For example, If you find yourself drinking a pot a day simply to stay awake, then coffee isn't the problem. Sleep deprivation is. If you find yourself experiencing severe headaches when you lack coffee, you may have a minor addiction that calls for weaning. And if you deem it acceptable to drink unpalatable coffee simply for the caffeine jolt, then an intervention of sorts may be necessary. This is perhaps the most important aspect of acceptable coffee drinking, enjoyment. Liken it to eating a cookie or slice of pizza. If you're going to eat it, shouldn't it be an amazing cookie? Shouldn't it be the best slice of pizza ever? Would you settle for Chips Ahoy or a frozen pizza? Then why settle for Folgers in your cup? I truly believe that at the heart of consumption, quality is what controls quantity. If you've heard of my first bite rule, then you know it applies to all substances, coffee included. Most of the blogs and articles aimed at replacing coffee assume that you are only drinking it for energy or out of an unhealthy addiction. But what they fail to address is the pleasure that comes with each sip. What they overlook is the sensory satisfaction of smelling, drinking, and holding a warm cup of coffee. What they disregard is the fundamental role coffee plays in your morning routine. When I wake up in the morning, 
One of my first thoughts is in anticipation of coffee. I come downstairs, fill my kettle with water and flip the switch. While the water boils, I drink a warm cup of lemon and cayenne water. Then I grind the beans. When the water is boiled, I empty the grinds into the French press with cinnamon, pour the water over, stir, and brew. It's a methodical dance that sets the stage for my day. At the center of it all is the knowledge that the first sip is going to be heavenly. Just as there are a 100 reasons to quit coffee, there are equally as many to imbibe. Through research, aka science, coffee has been shown to lessen the symptoms of depression, reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes, improve athletic and academic performance, decrease the risk of skin cancer in women, reduce the risk of liver cirrhosis, provide massive amounts of antioxidants, delay the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia, both of which I am genetically prone to, help control some symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and more. With all of these benefits in mind, it makes it harder to lambast coffee drinkers. And while these are all fantastic side effects of the beverage, the foremost reason to drink it is this, because you love it and you don't abuse it. That's it. Abuse can mean several things, of course, including overconsumption, adding tons of sugar and cream, being unable to function without, and so on. But that's the heart of it, really. Drink coffee because it brings you supreme enjoyment. It plays a part in your rituals, and it doesn't control you in any sense. Drink it because it tastes good, because it gives you comfort on a still, quiet morning, because it makes you close your eyes and deeply appreciate life's pleasures. Drink it because you want to, and pay no mind to the barrage of bloggers who want to convince you of its evil. Brew on, my friends. Brew on. You just listened to the post titled, Just Brew It, by the Harfanuni of thinkartfanuni.com. When I was in graduate school, I was assigned a project. I needed to write a paper on the effects of caffeine and the human body. I'll be honest, I went in with a very biased approach. I was looking for studies that showed caffeine was harmful. And you know what I found? The exact opposite. Before I did that paper, I had very clear thoughts on caffeine. I would poo-poo those coffee drinkers. I would say, you've got to quit. But once I did this paper, everything changed. I could not find a single study at that time that showed coffee caused any health problems. In fact, I kept finding data that showed it was beneficial. So just as Ms. Fanuni mentioned that coffee consumption regularly can reduce your risk for a number of diseases, that's basically the same data I found too. And it really hasn't changed since I've graduated from school. And what we found is that caffeine through food sources like coffee is only mildly addictive. So it doesn't have the same potential for addiction like heroin or nicotine or cocaine, something like that, because it doesn't affect the reward centers in the brain as strongly. And so what happens is when folks want to quit consuming coffee, usually they can. And unlike nicotine, cocaine, or heroin, it doesn't have the negative side effects that come along with it. In fact, as Ms. Fununi mentioned, caffeine or coffee consumption regularly can actually improve brain function. It can actually help our bodies burn fat. So it's pretty amazing stuff. And I especially liked that Ms. Fanuni mentioned buying organic, free trade coffee. I try and do the exact same thing. Oh, and if you're wondering how much coffee is too much, it's different for everybody. And again, if you don't drink coffee or you've tried it and you tend to have the shakes or you just don't feel right after consuming caffeine, that's fine. Please do not start. But for most people, they can drink up to four to five cups per day, and that's perfectly acceptable. So if you're adding anything to your coffee, creamer, milk, sugar, sugar substitutes, just beware that that's gonna affect, of course, how your body processes that coffee. And so the risk for disease may not change as drastically as if you just consumed it black. All right, once again, we're gonna be doing another book giveaway soon. We give away at least one to a random person every month. To be in those raffles, make sure you're on our weekly newsletter at oldpodcast.com. You'll get some free spreadsheet tools from us right away. Then you'll get a weekly email with updates. You'll be in our raffles automatically. You won't get spam from us. Again, that's all at oldpodcast.com. Thank you again so much for listening. Thank you for sharing this show with a friend or family member. I'll see you back here in about 24 hours where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show, and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one, literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, 
where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember your optimal life awaits.